But there's, I'm told there are an awful lot of people that have been active in this past summer who are saying, but I don't want to get involved in an election. Why not? Who's going to make the final decision whether or not you live with nationalized health care? Some guy casting a vote in a legislative body. And we ought to decide who that guy is. I've always said that the margin of victory in every big uh, policy issue that sits on the floor of a legislative body is always brought to that final vote by the bedwetters. <laughs> and they're always there. And these are the guys who don't have convictions on which to stand. They oftentimes don't understand the policy itself. By the way, did you ever notice the law of unintended consequences is never applied to private transactions, only to public policy? And these bedwetters are going to sit there, and in the end, they're going to give their vote to whom they fear the most. Why shouldn't that be us? We're America. Right on. But, uh, what I would suggest that we do is, is understand that of all the times we show up, there can be no time that is more critical and important than the time at which they're up for the election by which they will have the job or not. Yeah. And of those of us uh, that want to stand in defense of liberty, to stand uh, in assistance of small, responsible government that understands a duty and does it with some degree of efficiency, if we don't show up at that type, we lose, no matter what we've said. Can you, can you imagine telling your child every day of your life, I expect you to do this, I expect you to do this, I expect you to do that, and when he doesn't do it, you say, well, of course, that's not my business. <laughs> been there, done that. I got 14. You've been there, done that. Right? <laughs> but at any rate, here's the deal. Uh, we we have right now a chance for America. To, America has understood. We went too far in the last election. We bought platitudes and pretty promises and nice rhetoric. We let a guy win a talent contest yeah. who has no capacity to serve in the office and we've got our chance to straighten it up. I, I want you to think very seriously about how much can I do between now and then. I'm just going to tell you a little secret. In North Carolina, we had a bunch of Republicans who wouldn't listen to the grassroots activists that believe that they, they, their state government should be responsible. And they lost their jobs yes. because of grassroots. And they should have lost their jobs, no matter what the party is. And I'm not for one party or the other. It just seems to me there seems to be a preponderance of audacity and ignorant behavior uh, that's greater in one of the two parties than the other. <laughs> But there also seems to be enough when you look at office holders to go around. And what we need to understand is we have a right to expect those people who, when they enter that office, and everybody does this, they swear a singular oath to nothing other than the Constitution of the United States. This is not that hard to understand. The people who wrote that were smart, courageous, innovative people. They knew what the meaning of the word is, was, and they wrote exactly what they were meant. And it's, it's not unreasonable, it's not unpatriotic for us to simply say to you, to you folks who have the privilege of being big, in high office, who swore that oath of allegiance to that precious document, that document that Churchill called the greatest moment of entrepreneurial his, uh, courage in the history of the world for democracy and freedom. To stand by and fulfill that commitment. If you can't do that, then don't yeah, expect no. us to help you in that job. Go on home. And if you want to be faithful to something else, go be faithful. You have a right to be faithful. But in that office, you took an oath to my constitution, a precious gift. So I want to thank you all. I've been, uh, I should tell you, I, 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 when I, I spent 18 years in, in Washington in the House. You did a good job. I had a lot of fights, and I won more than my fair share of them. But I never won a fight in Washington where the critical element of the victory 
didn't come from grassroots activists who reminded people from another part of the state, another part of the country, what their duty was on that day of that vote. So grassroots activism is America at work for the protection of their freedom, fulfilling the precious promise of the American Constitution. By the way, the great and unique promise of the American Constitution that makes us different from Europe and correct where Europe is wrong. It's that we promise to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. We don't put the well-being of the community, of the collective ahead of the liberty of the individual. That's why we're different. That's why we have to make sure Ladies and gentlemen, take harmony. Thank you, Mr. Army. Will you join him? Will you join him? Why are we here? If I could put a good little uh, bow on this and kind of end this evening real quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Virginia, this fight is not for the weak. I wish I could give you an insight into what uh, my email looks like at times and the kind of reaction we get from people when we stand up for the cause of freedom and liberty. It is not for the weak. It is for those who are willing to take the arrows in this fight. And let me just leave you with this. Just one little tidbit that happened a couple, couple blocks down from here. This is the history of Virginia that we have. That we can look back and see what a man did who was born in Hanover County, who is said to have never missed a single protest of the, of the tyranny of Britain, who was at every single march for colony rights who was born in Hanover, who was called a radical. You guys been called a radical? Anyone been called a radical? We have a great history in this commonwealth. Who am I talking about? Anyone know? Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. He took arrows for us. The best way to honor men like Patrick Henry, Thomas Jefferson, and Madison, and Dick Army is to get in the battle. This is the history that we have as Virginia citizens and American patriots. So let me encourage you on that this evening to get involved. They sacrifice their lives, their sacred honor. What do we have to sacrifice but our time and our efforts? The cause is freedom and liberty. Thanks for being here. Thanks for